Hey guys, we have a lot to talk about. So today I'm going to talk to you about Batman vs Superman. I'm going to try and condense my opinions to 10 minutes maximum. Just letting you know, it might be a long video. If you want to hear if this movie is good or not, I'm going to tell you without spoiling it for you. It's been a very polarizing movie and I understand why. I'm going to tell you why I have a very love and hate relationship for this movie. I don't hate it with a passion like a lot of people have. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, but there are also many elements that I think were done very well and I want to discuss both of them with you. The plot of the movie is pretty much self-explanatory with the title. This is basically a sequel to Man of Steel and we are sort of discovering how the world is reacting to Superman. Some are very for him, they think he's like the world's salvation, some of them see him as a god. Some are very worried because Superman has the power to basically annihilate the entire human race. Batman is not a very big fan of Superman's existence. He thinks that even if there's 1% chance that this guy could be your enemy, he should be completely eliminated because nobody should take that risk. And so that is the major confrontation of these two characters and mixed in with a very, very, very terrible Lex Luthor, you have your movie. Starting off in the very beginning, the movie is just hard to grasp. It's just, it's very strange how it's done. There's just a lot of cuts of scenes that don't seem to connect at all together. And there's zero explanation as to why they are related until very further on in the movie. I feel like maybe they were trying to cut it in the style of a comic book, whereas, you know, you pass the page and all of a sudden you're somewhere else. And that works for a comic book because you have the time uh, and you control the time as to how you're reading it and what's going on, whereas the movie just continues and you just have to adjust to it, and if you don't, you just get completely lost. I feel like the biggest errors of this movie are about editing, the way it was cut, and the lack of attention to details of the characters is what makes this a very messy composition of what should have been a really great epic battle between these two amazing DC characters. Even though it's a sequel to Superman, this movie is really, really about Batman. It's Batman reacting to the existence of Superman's and is the entire world judging the existence of Superman, while Superman is basically not doing much. He's saving some people here and there. He's trying to avoid all confrontation as to what people think he is or he isn't. He doesn't want to add to it. He just wants to do what he believes is the right thing. But no matter what he does, good or bad, it just really kind of like fires back towards him. They just don't develop the character well enough in dialogue or in just problematic situations for him for you to feel that pain and for you to feel that he's really struggling. As for Batman, what can be said? I would like to say that I was one of those people who was really, really not happy that Ben Affleck was going to be Batman. First, I thought it was too soon for there to be a new Batman. Second of all, I just, I'm not a big fan of Ben Affleck, never have been, and it just, it, it didn't seem to fit for me. I was very angry, I let it be known that I was very angry, and I do have to say, I do take it all back. I'm not gonna lie, he was really good in it. I don't think he was amazing, I don't think he blew my mind, but definitely a lot better than I thought he was going to be. I think in part it's also that they wrote the character very well, he's very sympathetic, he's kind, he's not very out there, Ben Affleck's performance is not trying to do something incredibly different, and I think that's great for fans who were dubious about the whole situation. But there's one scene of Batman kicking ass, and it's probably the best scene in the entire movie because he's rough and you feel the punches and he looks massive against all of these guys and there's just some clothes lining and kicking great stuff I'm sorry Ben Affleck that I misjudged you another one that truly surprised me was Gal Gadot I was not on board with her when they first mentioned that I take it all back as well she was absolutely wonderful there's hints of her here and there she just kind of shows up as this mysterious woman clearly she has some kind of hidden agenda and she's always bumping into Bruce Wayne her wardrobe design is very sexy and tight and just revealing in the back particularly but it's classy and she always has like these accessories that kind of reference to her you know gold cubs and her gold necklace so you kind of do feel she has a bit of a warrior wardrobe on even if she's not wearing her costume I thought that was very cool when she finally shows up you know in full force of Wonder Woman oh my god great scene great theme by Hans Zimmer for Gal Gadot there's like a lot of you know African percussion and it's very vivid and it's very different from the other ones really enjoyed her being in this I thought they handled that very well. Now as for a character that was not handled very well, and I think this is mostly a universal opinion, Jesse Eisenberg really, really annoyed me. I don't necessarily think it's Jesse's fault. His performance overall is very good as, as an actor's performance. It's just that the way they rewrote the character does not fit, and it feels like they wrap this character around Jesse Eisenberg's 
usual persona as opposed to him blending into the character of Lex Luthor. I am fine if you want to change certain things about certain classic characters. It's okay. This did not blend. It was just like a clown saying weird things that sounded smart, a lot of jazz hands, a lot of movement, and a lot of just crazy humming. It's just, it's psychotic. And the character of Lex Luthor is not psychotic. The ultimate enemy of Superman is about battling his great strength and unshakable morale. And since Lex Luthor cannot fight him in those capabilities, he has to be a very strong and very powerful businessman and incredibly intelligent. There has to be something that finds the weakness for Superman. And that's what Lex Luthor brings. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor is just like a geeky, crazy kid who's a little too spoiled and wants a little too much control and it just does not work. I don't know if I'm right about this, but there were moments where I felt like he was trying to portray Heath Ledger's The Joker. It's not super obvious, but there was something about his lanky body, his slouchiness, like the hair hanging over his face. There was just something about it that reminded me of the craziness of The Joker, which is really a Batman thing. Like, having a crazy, erratic enemy is a Batman thing, and it doesn't work with Superman. I hated it so much. It just felt like they told Jesse Eisenberg to go overboard because this would totally be very cool. And speaking about going overboard, I feel the same thing about every other style in this movie. I like the way Zack Snyder movies look. I think his cinematography is good. However, there were just some things that just lacked subtlety. And I think if he had just restrained himself a little bit, if he had just re-edited or looked at certain things a little bit more, it would have been a more refined product. For example, the music, even though it's composed by Hans Zimmer, who I love, he's my favorite composer, it's just so out of proportion, it's so loud. What is going on with Hans Zimmer's sound mixing? It's insane! Every time Batman is around, it's like this very epic choir theme, and there's just a lot of noise, they try to make it very epic and dark, and it's just a little too much when sometimes they're just showing him. It's just... It, it, it really hurts your ears. And since it feels like the movie's more about Batman, every time you play Superman's theme, which is the same from Men of Steel, which I totally loved, I thought it was triumphant and kind of delicate and sweet, it gets drowned out by these crazy sounds of everybody else. It doesn't mix well, it just wasn't a harmony in the whole score, and again, it felt like they were thinking, the more the better. I felt the same thing about the fights. I know a lot of people were very happy with the choreography in the fights. I was worried about it because mixing Batman and Superman is a very difficult thing. You have, as they like to tell you in the movie many times, man versus God. A lot of people loved the Batman vs. Superman fight. I wasn't a big fan. Uh, I get a little bit tired of things being thrown around casually and just buildings being broken all over the place. I feel like I'm missing the actual action and the actual choreography between the two characters. And so to me, it was kind of like, well, the same CGI stuff that I see all the time. As I said earlier on, I think the biggest mistake of this movie is just lack of editing. The post-production just feels very overanalyzed. I think they ended up filming by the end of 2014, so you've had, I don't know, a year or so to produce this movie, to complete it, and it does feel like they were struggling in post-production, like they were just trying to make it very epic and very amazing. Overall, I feel like the movie was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It surprised me. I thought I was going to hate it. I don't hate it, but it wasn't as great as it could have been. What I like more about DC is like these characters have a philosophy behind them. They're darker and more mysterious because they have this life philosophies implied to these characters and that's what makes it so interesting. For Batman, it's like facing your fears head on, facing the tragedy and the loss that you've had in your life, living in the darkness because you have no choice, but that is kind of the way he lives and that's the way he helps people. That's all that he knows. For Superman, it's more idealistic. It's about the goodness of humanity and having hope he is the world's hope. So bringing these two together should be super interesting. It's polar opposites. It would be amazing to see how it blends out and it's amazing to see which theory would actually win out, not just in a combat, but really what works better for humanity in this world. They're just characters with a lot of substance and I hate it when it comes down to just some epic rumble between two superheroes because it's cool. There's so much more that could have been done with it. There's so much more that you can take out of these characters the way Christopher Nolan did and that was just not the case in this movie. So, guys, that is my very long ranting about Batman vs Superman. It's worth giving it a watch. 
not the best that DC can do. Hopefully they will do better in the future, although I don't have high hopes anymore. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channels. I try to make movie reviews or shenanigans like this every week. Also, if you want to check all my social media, it'll all be linked down below with any additional information or questions that you might have. Guys, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful Easter day, and I will see you on our next movie date. Bye!